Time was when secondary school students could vividly describe the old Oyo Empire, Songhai Empire, Boronu Empire, and Mali Empire with words. This was made possible in the past when history was part of the subjects in the secondary school curriculum. History simply defined is the study of the past. It attempts to discover, collate, and interpret data or information, oral or written form, from the past, link it to the present, and adopt same for future plans. All that changed when government, in its wisdom, took a decision to delist history as a standalone subject of study in the primary and secondary schools. History is very essential uh, for making people understand exactly where they are from, uh, you know, the origins of the country, the struggles isn't it, you know, that led to the foundation of Nigeria as a whole, uh, the vision of the forefathers who established this country. And I think uh, these were issues that were missed unfortunately, isn't it, you know, by those who designed the curriculum at that time. At the time, the argument in some quarters was that students were no longer attracted to the subject and not willing to pursue it as a degree course in the university. Expectedly, this gap bred a new generation of youth who could not understand the social, political and economic realities of the country within the context of historical evolution. Now, one of the implications of not teaching history for so long is that all the children who had their basic education in Nigeria within the period had no knowledge of the past and are most likely to repeat past mistakes in the future with the same consequences, perhaps greater consequences. To appreciate the collateral damage of expunging history from the curriculum, one only needs to browse through commentaries by youths on the various social media platforms. The history of Nigeria, as recent as the June 12, 1993 debacle, not to mention the various fierce wars across the country, are most times not on the card when this generation of youths are wont to debate. You are talking about the old generation who never had the opportunity to understand their own history, who never had the opportunity to understand how they got to even where they are as a people, as a country. And for me, that's a major, it is a major disservice to them. Because there's no way, no matter what they become, whether they become doctors, lawyers, or anything, there is that particular disconnect to continue to be there. Indeed, with history, cultural values, ethos, and civilization are preserved. Despite civilization, it is not possible to graduate from a college in some European countries without studying European history. It was therefore a relief for all those who understand the import of history when the Federal Ministry of Education recently developed its plan on education for change, a ministerial strategic plan 2016 to 2019, which contains several initiatives and activities to be executed, including the disarticulation of social studies and the reintroduction of the teaching of history in primary and secondary schools. One of the issues that historians had with the teaching of the subject in the past is that teachers paid less attention to the history of Nigeria and indeed Africa, an issue that the new curriculum is taking care of. What we have done is to try as much as possible to make it Nigerian history to teach about the history of Nigerian communities and Nigerian peoples. We have heroes and heroines to teach our children about our place, our traditional institutions, our government institutions, our democracy, how it evolved over time. So that aspect of dwelling so much on colonial and Western history has been reduced by this new move that we are making. Somehow, the removal of history from the school's curriculum coincided with the disappearance of history books from the bookstands. Hopefully, its reintroduction will also bring about the reemergence of history books. Victor Azul reporting for Dateline 360.